Hi everyone, before we get into the video, I just want to throw this one out there. I'm going to do a viewer suggestion video again. So instead of using the community tab, I'd like you all to drop your ideas for a theme down below. So what I mean by that is you could say deep wood story, or you could say living alone story, or you could say story about McDonald's, I don't know. And what I'll do is I'll pick the best five or six or seven and we'll put it in a video. So please like, share, subscribe, and here's the bells. This happened when I was having a quiet night in. It was kind of late, and I was just lounging on the couch. My dog had hopped up onto the couch with me, and was sleeping with his head on my belly. I remember that I was watching some Major League Baseball game marathon, and it felt like it was going on forever. I was really drowsy, and I was nodding off at points. Suddenly the dog jumped off of me, and down to the floor. He stared at the frosted door that leads to the hallway. I asked my dog, What's wrong, boy? But he wouldn't even look my way. He was completely fixated on that door. I sat up, and I looked at his face. He was baring his teeth. I've never seen him do that before. He was always such a placid little guy. My dog was beginning to worry me now. My worries increased when I heard him let out a very low, deep, sustained growl. This was so odd because, like I said, I hadn't ever seen this kind of behavior from my dog before. His fur was up and he had taken this aggressive forward-leaning stance. I decided to turn my attention to the lounge door. I wanted to figure out what my dog was growling at. I couldn't believe what I saw. There was a dark silhouette behind the frosted glass and it was doing this very strange and creepy swaying movement. It was like it was coming closer to the door and then retreating backwards. Like it was trying to decide whether to try to come in or not. It was very creepy. I had a stun gun, so I backed over to my backpack, which I had thankfully left in the lounge that night, and I dug it out. I remember hearing myself say something like, What the hell is this? out loud. The atmosphere in my house that day seemed so dark and tense. I stood there with my dog thinking, at any moment the door could open, or at any moment that shadowy figure could turn and leave. My legs were shaking. I was finding it hard to keep balance and of course my arms were shaking even more. I just tried my hardest to steady my aim all the while, my dog was still growling at the shadow of some unknown intruder. Then suddenly, just as quick as it began, it was over. The shadow just dissipated. It was like it had disappeared in a puff of smoke. Was it ever really there? I'm pretty sure something was there. The way it disappeared was so strange, it kind of just gradually seeped back into the darkness. I must sound so crazy, but it's true, I swear, that's what I saw. After it left, my dog calmed down, and he just went right on back to the couch and laid down as if to say, nothing to worry about now. It was amazing. I'll tell you now, it took a hell of a long time to summon the courage to open that door. But when I did, I found no signs of a break-in, and my door was firmly locked. I even had put the chain on. No one had been in my house. But I definitely saw something. And I know that my dog saw it too. I think I was visited by some kind of spirit. And based on how my dog and I felt when we encountered it, I don't think that it was a particularly friendly spirit. I'm just grateful that my dog picked up on it and was there with me. 
It was honestly a terrifying experience. I work in the apparel industry, and due to rising costs and declining quality coming out of China, my company decided to develop a new business opportunity to consolidate suppliers in Bangladesh. So I went to visit a supplier in Bangladesh to receive a pitch. I would be there to check the quality, perform some on-site surveys, and just see how things work out there. So this happened when I went to Bangladesh. I was blown away when I got there. Urban areas like Dhaka were so modern and just amazing, they rivaled Tokyo. Having said that, the countryside looked like it was right out of the movie My Neighbor Totoro. By that I mean there were a lot of rural areas without access to sufficient electricity or running water. I was kind of taken aback that their factories were located in an area like that. Let me just get it straight, I don't dislike that kind of environment at all. So to be honest, I was enjoying looking around. I was discussing things with the employees of the factory, and they were just all so nice. They were very interested in Japan and our way of life. And I have to say that I felt the same about Bangladesh. After a few days into my visit, I was offered to stay in the village with the locals. To be honest, the hotel I was staying in was in a place called Barisal, which was a little away from the factory and the village area, so I thought, why not? I had a rare opportunity to see how the locals lived. Plus, I wouldn't exactly be doing much in my hotel room anyways. The village seemed pretty wealthy. They had an arcade with some really cool PS2 games in there. It was great to see those. They had their own version of a convenience store too. One thing I noticed pretty quickly was that it seemed that foreigners were pretty rare for their village. People were crowding around me. It felt like I was some kind of celebrity. By the way, it was just men who crowded around me. I'm also a man. I didn't see any women out and about. I spent the night at Mr. Aradad's house. That's a slight pseudonym, by the way. And I had a night that I would never forget. He and his family welcomed me in with open arms, and I really enjoyed my time with them. The night grew late, and I headed up to the bed they had given me for the night. I was messing around on my laptop at the desk in the bedroom. I think I was playing some game I had downloaded. And I was just about to shut the laptop down to get some sleep. When I felt something. I felt a presence of someone in the room with me. Not just one person, but many. Maybe a dozen. I can't explain it well. But it was kind of like when you're in a movie theater in the dark. There are just people sat in silent anticipation, not talking. People just collectively being there. Do you know what I mean? You can feel a presence and you can sense that there is breathing in the room. Little things like that. The village is completely without power at night. The only light that was on in Mr. Aradad's house was the light coming from my laptop. I turned the laptop away from me and kind of waved it around the room to see if the light from my screen revealed anyone in the room with me. But of course, no one was there. I was alone in what felt like a room full of presences. Realizing that gave me the tingles, but I told myself that it was all in my mind, and I was probably imagining things because I was in some place new. I forced myself to shut my laptop down, and the room fell dark. It was time to sleep. I crawled into bed and tried to ignore my own thoughts. I tried as hard as I could, but I couldn't convince myself. I knew that there was something in that room with me and it was still there. 
I thought that there was a spirit in the room with me and I decided to open my eyes to look around because I had always wanted to see something paranormal. I couldn't see anything though, because it was so dark. Still, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. I don't know if my eyes adjusted to the dark or something, but I saw something that looked like a white, horizontal line drawn on the wall. The line was broken in some areas, but it looked like a line. I was just staring at that line that seemed to have appeared out of the dark. It was like these tiny, white moving shapes that just arrived and formed a vague line. It was very odd. I don't know why, but when I saw that, I felt very calm. It was soothing to me. I felt relaxed. And before I knew it, I had slipped into a deep, dreamless sleep. The following morning, I toyed with the idea of telling Mr. Aradad about what happened. But in the end, I felt like there was no need to scare him unnecessarily, so I kept quiet. But later, I remembered something that Mr. Aradad said when I was surrounded by the locals. He said something similar to this. For some of these villagers, you may be the only foreign person that they will ever see. So this is why they are drawn to you. They want to hear your stories and see how you are different from them. Sorry, things are a little different here in comparison to the city. Please forgive them. They don't mean to be rude. So with that in mind, I can't help but wonder if some local spirits or apparitions wanted to make contact with me too that night. If that's the case, then it's probably not the worst haunting or paranormal experience anyone could have, right? To date, it has been my only paranormal experience, and I'm fine with that. A few years ago, I had a dream that I was in an unfamiliar place. I was in a forest and there was a small river near a house. And then I was asked by a middle-aged couple for help. They called me over and in my dream, I thought that they had lost something and needed help finding it. I say that because they were kind of hunched over down by that small river. As I got down there, I saw that they were trying to float a man's body downstream. I was absolutely shocked due to the low level of water in the river. The body was only partially submerged and the body seemed to be stuck and it wasn't moving. Then the man and the woman began to leave as if they had given up on their horrible task. I was utterly terrified at that point. I panicked and I regretted coming here. At this point, I would like to remind you that this is still a dream or a nightmare might be more accurate. For a reason unknown to me, I grabbed a bucket. It was like one of those sandcastle buckets you see kids playing with at the seaside. I just started filling this bucket up with water and tipping it on the body to try and dislodge it so it flows down the river. Then I hear a distant police siren and something inside me snaps and I think, oh my god, I have to report this. And that was the point that I woke up. I was so creeped out by the realism of that dream I just had to tell my husband about it. I guess I wanted to talk about it because honestly, it was way scarier than I can do it justice by just writing it down. I told him in as much detail as I could, and there was a lot. I could remember the terrain, where I was stood, and what that middle-aged couple looked like. I mean, I could tell you where bushes and rocks were by that river. It's like I have a photo of it in my mind. I even drew a picture of it for my husband, but I'm no artist. We talked it over and we both ended up laughing at the level of detail my mind had conjured up. It relieved me, to be honest, because I woke up feeling as if I was an accessory to a crime. I had this strange lingering sense of guilt, as if I was hiding a murder. So about a month ago, 
I was watching the news with my husband, and we saw a report of a murder. A middle-aged man and woman had killed a man, and his body had been found half-submerged in a river. Sounds familiar, right? Well, in the report, I saw the exact same angle by the river I had seen in my dream. The scenery was exactly the same. I clasped my hand to my mouth in shock. The river was just the same as it had been in my dream. It was shallow and narrow, and then they cut to the suspect's house, which looked exactly like the house in my dream. What shocked me the most was seeing an item on the step outside of their house. It was the sandcastle bucket I had used to try and dislodge the body with, in my dream of course. In the news report, they even said that there had been an attempt to float the body down the river by the suspects. But they said that those suspects must have given up at some point. The news reader suggested that they may have been disturbed or spotted during the act, and that could have scared them off. The appearance of those two suspects came next, and they looked just as they had in my dream. It was around that point my husband murmured, Isn't this like that dream you had? It was hard to ignore the similarities between the dream and the news report. It was just all so overwhelming. It was like, with each coming sentence from the newsreader's mouth, the more my anxiety grew. I felt as if I had, I felt as if I was involved because I had seen it all before. There were too many intricate details for it not to be even remotely considered a coincidence. My husband and I talk about it now and then. Little things just remind me of it, or he will sometimes come to me with a question about it. By the way, the real crime that was committed happened in a part of the country that I have never been to before. Miles and miles and miles away from me. Last summer, I went out with a friend of mine for a drive. We wanted to go someplace scary. We were always trying to find some place that might be haunted. Well, we went to a couple of places, but nothing really of note happened. It was pretty dull, to be fair. I thought of a place we could go, though. Our local ski resort was closed, as it was summer. And I thought it would be fun to go up there while it was empty. The ski resort was way up in the mountains, and we had drove through some long winding roads to get there. We pulled into the parking lot, which was surprisingly not behind a locked gate, and we parked up. When we got there, we didn't really know what to do, to be honest, but then I had an idea. I came up with a game we could play. I am not really proud of my game, and I don't think anyone out there should try it because it's dumb and it could have got us or someone really hurt. My game consisted of turning off the lights in the car and driving around the huge parking lot. Although it was night and pretty dark, the moon was full and bright, but that doesn't make it okay though. But we thought that it would be okay. I have to say that driving around without the lights off is pretty thrilling. I was getting a little carried away. I wanted to scare my friend, so I was going faster and faster doing these crazy skits. My friend got really mad at me at one point, so I figured I'd better stop and turn on the lights. Oh man, I wasn't ready for what I saw. I don't think my explanation can do it justice, but let me try. When I reluctantly turned on the lights, something appeared right in front of my car. There was someone there. Not just one person, but six or seven. They were stood in different spots of the parking lot. All these figures were stood facing away from the car, and then, as if they reacted to the headlights, they turned to face us. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was so scared, I just reacted instinctively. 
I spun the car around and screeched out of the parking lot. I couldn't tell you much about those people. I couldn't describe their clothing or anything like that, but one thing for certain is, I'll never forget how the one closest to the car looked. I saw his face. And I knew that he wasn't among the living. I have no idea what the hell that was, but I never drove with the lights out like an idiot again. This happened when I was at school. I had finished early that day. I think some after school class was cancelled or something. I went straight home and I was relaxing in the kotatsu. My little sister usually came home at around 3pm, but it seemed like she must have gone out to play with some of her friends. Both my parents were at work, so I had the whole house to myself. It was amazing. I was eating whatever I wanted and also watching whatever I wanted on TV. I got so comfortable that I almost fell asleep. Some boring show aimed at older women came on TV and I couldn't be bothered to change the channel, so I ended up falling asleep. Then suddenly I was jolted back awake. I heard a sound. It sounded like something heavy had just moved upstairs. I had heard my parents talking to a bunch of people in the neighborhood about break-ins and robberies in our area. So naturally I thought, oh god, they finally come to our house. I was about 16 at the time, and I was in the baseball team. I knew I had a good swing and a bat in the hallway, so I chose to do something reckless. I grabbed my bat and I ran upstairs. I looked around, but I couldn't see anyone up there. I guess that I was so sleepy that I might have been imagining things, or maybe even dreaming. So I went back downstairs and back under the kotatsu. I think about five minutes went by, and I heard the sound again, and I knew this time that it wasn't my imagination. I felt scared. I felt this way because when I came back downstairs, after checking, I locked the front door. I checked the back door and it was locked too. I wanted to check the locks because I got myself all paranoid about these ideas of burglars. Now I knew that the only way someone was going to get into our house would be through a window. And since the whole area was on high alert because there had been break-ins, I didn't think that robbers would be so dumb enough to try to smash an upstairs window to get into a house. Plus, I didn't hear a smash. I heard what sounded like something heavy being moved. So if it wasn't a burglar, then what the hell was up there? I wondered to myself. I knew that my sister hadn't come back yet. And the same went for my parents. The front door hadn't been opened. I was still home alone, although I suddenly didn't feel all that alone. I was scared, but I picked up my bat and I started for the stairs again. I slowly climbed them this time. A part of my bravado had wilted. I could still hear some movements up there. I was able to pinpoint the sound. It was definitely coming from my sister's bedroom. As I got near the top of the stairs, the sound stopped. The house was silent. I half thought about going back downstairs and running out of the house, but I pushed forward. I think my curiosity had outfought my fear. The door to my sister's bedroom was open, and before I could even enter the room, I saw something shocking. If you were to go into my sister's room on any given day, you would have seen her desk against the wall on the left as you enter her bed off to the right alongside her bookcase and the chest of drawers. But not that day. 
all the big things in her room had been moved. It was completely different to the last time I saw it. It looked like it had been all shoved into the corner of her room, where the door to her wardrobe was. I know, I know. Kids change their rooms all the time, right? Well, my job most mornings is to wake up my sister for school. So I saw the layout of that room that morning. And since I was the first one home, I was shocked by what I was staring at. I just couldn't believe it. Our house had always been a bit spooky. I mean, we heard some noises coming from upstairs before, but our parents had always told us that it was nothing to worry about. We hadn't ever come home to find furniture moved around though. I mean, it sounds weird saying this, but I would have preferred to have gone up there and seen whatever had moved all her stuff rather than been confronted with nothing. I didn't know what to do, but I knew that I didn't want to be home alone anymore. I had no explanation for why all her stuff was piled up in the corner of her room. I have always wondered why the furniture seemed to be blocking the closet door, but I never found out why. I called a couple of my friends in the neighborhood and asked them if they wanted to hang out, and thankfully they did. We all met up at a nearby convenience store. I would never be the type to believe in experiences like this, but since it actually happened to me, I have no choice but to believe. It was the first time in my life that I realized that there are some things in this world that are completely unknown. This is a terrifying experience I had at my last apartment. A few years ago, back when I was a student, I lived in a run-down apartment because that was all I could afford. It was a nice enough room, don't get me wrong. It was spacious, and the rent was reasonable too. There was only one thing I couldn't stand about the place. Every night at about 11pm, I heard this strange knocking sound coming from upstairs. At first I thought it was some kind of animal, maybe a cat or something. But because I could always hear that noise at a specific time of night, I put it down to being the work of a human, someone living upstairs. One night during my third month of living in that place, I decided to go upstairs to complain to the resident in the apartment above mine. However, when I went to speak to the guy, it felt like he knew my complaint was coming, because he said something along the lines of, Listen, buddy, the last guy who lived in your place said the exact same thing. I'm not making that noise, man. It's probably just an animal or something, okay? I don't think he liked or appreciated the look I must have had on my face, because before I could say anything, he said, I can't hear the noise up here. It's nothing to do with me, all right? And with that, he gave me a look of his own. I didn't understand. It didn't seem logical. The noise was coming from the ceiling, and his apartment was directly above mine. How could he not have had something to do with that weird tapping noise at 11pm? However, since I was relatively new to the building, I decided to give him the benefit of the doubt, and believed that it might not be him making that noise. His face said it all, really. It said to me, I've heard this all before, give me a break. Later that night, the noise got louder for the first time. I heard a sound that sounded a little closer to thumping than tapping. I was getting really irritated now, so I grabbed my broom and I just started blasting on the ceiling with the handle in the general direction the thumping and tapping sounds came from. This set off a few more dull taps and thuds. It definitely sounded like something was up there. Or the neighbor was playing with me, I couldn't tell yet. Either way, all of those noises that night creeped me out. Then, I felt an eerie chill 
which made me feel as if I had unseen bugs crawling all over my body. It made me shudder. Above my head, that banging sound continued. It moved in all directions. I wondered if I had rats in the walls, but a part of me doubted that the second I thought of it. The sounds then stopped as if they had moved into one area above my head. It sounded like it was coming from the top of my closet. And then I suddenly remembered that inside the closet was this small hatch that led to a modest storage area. I wouldn't say it's big enough to call itself an attic, but it was kind of big. Something told me to get out of my apartment that night. I'm big on instincts and a big believer that if your gut is trying to tell you something, then you had better listen to it. So that night I went to stay with one of my student friends. The next day, I explained the situation to the landlord and told him that I was considering moving out as I didn't feel right in that apartment anymore. He said he would check it out, but he sounded reluctant. He arrived at my apartment after about 15 minutes. He said that it had been a while since he had been up there in the storage attic area thing. And if I wanted, he could set some traps or something if it was a wild animal up there. I told him that the noise was coming regularly before. It was a tapping sound and something that I thought an animal wouldn't be capable of doing, but he kind of shrugged it off as if he'd heard it all before. He opened the attic hatch from inside the closet and poked his head up there, but then quickly retracted it. His face was a few shades paler when it came back out of that attic hatch. He mumbled something and I told him that I couldn't hear what he was saying and then he repeated himself. Ah, son, you better come with me outside for a minute. With that, he made a call and then left. He asked me to stay out of my apartment while he was gone. I think about 30 minutes max passed and then he returned with the police. The police began to question me for a while, but it wasn't a heavy interrogation or anything. It was just one officer who was asking me about how long I lived there while a couple of others who showed up with him were poking around in that small attic space. The police and the landlord had done a great job of trying to hide what was in the attic from me because clearly something was going on. But I looked up there myself while I was waiting for him to come back. I couldn't fight my curiosity. I just had to know. I saw a skeletal hand up there. There were still strands of dead flesh clinging to it, but it had been there for a very long time. I can't help but think that the tapping noises that I heard was someone trying to get my attention. Someone wanting to be found.